Hi, this is Tate with Blackbird Outdoors, blackbirdoutdoors.net. Today we're going to be talking about how to build a soda can stove, basically an alcohol stove. These guys work really great. We've used them in all kinds of conditions, and they, they do work really great. The things you're going to need for this is one soda can. We try to either use the Coca-Cola product cans or um, cans that are, you know, the kind of brand name soda cans work really well. You'll need a pair of scissors, a razor knife, preferably one of the ones you can snap off the blades, and a pair of needle nose pliers or like a Leatherman tool. The first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to end up with three pieces, basically the middle, the bottom of the can, and the top of the can. So the first thing we want to do is cut out the top or the, you know, the mouth opening here. The way we do that is we're going to scroll around and just keep rolling in our hand about six times. Then we're going to take and go ahead and just cut out the top of the can. We've already kind of prepped it a little bit beforehand. When that gives us is that nice can. And until we get all the way around here. Once we've got that, we've got it all cut out inside. The next thing we want to do is take a push pin, just a regular old push pin, and we're going to be pushing it through the top here. Now I've already started this one, but about every quarter inch, about the middle area here on this little, you know, where it kind of turns into a little triangle here, um, about the middle area of that guy. And it doesn't have to be real perfect, and it doesn't have to be a certain number of holes or anything like that, or a certain size. I've used everything from a 16 inch bit drill bit to an eighth inch bit. This seems to work really, really well. A little push pin. Once we've got them all the way around, we've connected them, and it's just really easy to just push it right through. Now we need to go ahead and score the can so we can go ahead and separate it into three chunks. The first thing we use, I use an old uh, VHS tape. And all we're doing is we're taking the blade, holding it right up against the side, and rolling the can around the blade. That gives us a nice little scoring here, and I always start with the bottom. Now we want to score the top before we cut it, so we go ahead and flip it over. And again, holding the blade right up against. We don't want to hold the tool because that puts us up about a quarter of an inch. We want to hold it on the blade, and again, just scroll it around until we've scored all the way around. Usually about twice does a real good job. Once we've got that, we're going to go ahead. I like starting on the bottom. It seems to work a little better. And if we just go all the way around, and you just kind of push on it, a lot of times it almost separates on its own. Now, periodically, we do have this class, a class on how to make these here at the shop. So if you keep an eye on our website, blackbrowdoors.net, and look on our calendar page, it does have this same, uh, it will have the class periodically through the year. We've done this class. We usually do it about three to five times a year. It's kind of a neat thing to be able to do. Now, once you've got it all the way through, go ahead and work your way on the top. And the top, same idea. You're just going to push through the side of the can to get it started, and sometimes that's a little. But once you get it started, it kind of separates all the way around. Now, it doesn't have to be super perfect, but it helps if there's no real sharp edges because you don't want the can to rip when you go to push the two together. So, now, once we get it all the way around here, and you'll see it's really not taking us that long to do this, but once we've got it all the way around, Now, if you don't have a, a VHS tape or a DVD case, what you can, the measurements on this guy are the top from here to here is an inch and three quarters. On the bottom, the bottom from the bottom of the, you know, if you measured it off the floor to the top here is an inch. And the center, after we cut it, so we're going to go ahead and cut it down the center. 
we're going to cut this to an inch and a half, which will end up looking like this guy. Now that we've got it cut, we want to go ahead and slide this guy in the crease up along the top here. And we just slide it in there and get it set. Now once we get it in there so it kind of locks in there like that, hold it in place and you can either mark it and then cut it or just cut it. But you want to make two slits, one on the top and one on the other side on the bottom so the two pieces fit together. Now once it's all the way inside like that, you can just go ahead and close it down. The other thing we want to do is make two little notches here on the bottom. That's going to be for letting uh, fuel run out to the outside. Now the fuel we use on these is alcohol. We don't want to use any petroleum products like white gas or gasoline or anything like that. It's just um, alcohol. We want to use something with 75% of alcohol or more. And that is any alcohol that has any more than 150 proof or 75% or above. Now rubbing alcohol, we like to see rubbing alcohol a little closer to the 100% or 99% proof or percent alcohol. Now, once we've got those two made up, now we need to take our bottom and we're going to take this and just use our needle nose pliers and we're just going to crimp it all the way around. So about quarter inch down, just all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just making it slightly smaller so it crimps into the other one. It will, you know, fall into the other one. Now another way to do this is to take your can on top and to press it over a new, you know, a can that hasn't been opened yet, actually pressing it over the top. Sometimes I do that just to get it to slide over the top. One problem you sometimes have is you sometimes split it. So just a little bit to get that guy to go over the top works really well. And then go ahead, but this is the way we usually end up doing it, just like this, with a little crimp so it fits. And once you've got it all the way crimped all the way around, go ahead and take your pieces. You're going to take, make sure the notches are, are on the bottom. You're going to slide it into your top piece here. It kind of glues itself in place there. Then go ahead and take your bottom and just squeeze the two together simple as it is. Now what we want to see is that we want to look inside and make sure it's seated all the way around. So it's you know all the way up and all the way in the bottom. And then just go ahead and I'll usually just take my hand and just do a little push. We don't want to push too hard. We don't want to split it. But they're pretty tough. And then we want to make sure that when we fill up our can here with alcohol, we fill it up from the inside. We fill it up no higher than the level of the jets on the side, the little holes on the side. Now, the way you light these, you go ahead and fill up your alcohol inside. You light the center. Once it starts flaring up, you'll slowly start to see it lighting the outside little holes out here, and you'll actually see the flame get a little higher, and you'll actually see it pressurizing the outside holes. Once that happens, go ahead and set your pan right on top, just like that, and you'll see the jets come out the side, and we'll have a video on that here pretty quick. So that's how to make a soda, um, a Pepsi can stove. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us on blackbearoutdoors.net or feel free to call the store. And again, my name is Tate, and have a great day.